Hello and welcome to the NVMe tutorial series part 2 Modeling with Spaces. In this part I will go through the NVMe Spaces um, tool and show you how we can model a site for simulation of environmental simulation in NVMe. The first thing we need to do is open the Spaces. The Spaces is the, is the tool where we can create 3D objects representing buildings, trees and other environment. We can do this through the this tool uh, just by clicking in the exe file or as I showed you uh, in the previous part you can do it through the headquarters. This is the, the interface you will see and the way you actually make 3D geometry in this interface is to draw small blocks um, seen from a plane view and then you can change uh, you can draw a, a block in a, in a certain height by changing the element of the bottom element of a building for example. <coughs> the first thing we need to do is to assign a site location to our site. We start to go to our basic settings and choose our designated site area. In our case I will use Copenhagen Denmark and if I want to be more precise, I can change the latitude and the longitude. Or apply changes. <clears throat> I'll come back to this part later in the other settings. I also want a background photo to make it easier for me to model. Go to the Digitize tab and select bitmap. I already created a bitmap. It has to be in the file uh, file uh, name called BP, BMP. Just zoom out a little. I made some notes on this bitmap. North, the true north is in rotated 17 degrees to the left. Also, you can see that the actual size of the buildings on the site is marked by this scale. We have these points all over the, uh, our platform, our space here. We can switch them on and off. Each of these points is a pixel or a grid. Now, I want to make sure that my size is represented correctly in the NVMIT um, environment and my rotation of north is represented correctly. To do so I will first try to fit my model to make sure my 10 meters corresponds to either one of these pixels or something I can maybe 10 of these pixels in this side, I will try to attempt. I will attempt to <coughs> adjust the size by two pixels. I can scale it from the from the top down or from the top down up. Here, I will scale from here and in, and I will scale in both directions here seems like 10 meters are almost the same as two pixels now. Also I want my site to be aligned into the middle therefore I will adjust it 25% in. We still haven't set our angle to be correct in this environment yet and we haven't told and we met that our pixels correspond to 5 meters in each direction here. To do so, 
you'll go back to the project and basic settings. In this space, grid size instruction main area, we will now tell NVMED that each of these grid sizes are 5 meters in all directions, assuming that our model is <coughs> is um, the same size in every direction. Also, we want to rotate our north 17 degrees. Yeah. Apply changes. To check if our direction of north is correct, we press this button and it has a similar alignment. Now I will begin to draw my buildings. In this tab over here, we will set the building height of our buildings. To begin with, I will start drawing this building. This building is 18 meters high. I write 18 here. And I'll just zoom in so we can see slightly better what we're doing. We can choose between 2 and 1 pixel drawings. And just by left clicking, I can choose in which pixel I want to be a building. Eight, 18 meters higher. Okay. This building is 8 meters high. We will continue drawing our buildings in this way uh, until our entire site is drawn. I've now drawn the rest of the buildings. I only miss these two. These are small sheds, and I will just draw them as 4 meter buildings. I might have drawn this slightly too big, and I want to remove this part of the building. The way I can do it is to by pressing this button, choosing this part, this part or this. Um, this uh, grid, this button, choosing this grid. This assembles, resembles the area in which I can remove <coughs> the building. I will press this button to remove it. Here I can set, click check this mark and press clear selected area and I'm sure to do this and now this area is changed. I will now start making the so soil um, elements and this is done by choosing soil and surface. You will however see this unfortunate thing that you cannot see the background photo as you can in the buildings tab. There's a neat little trick here. You can use the selection tool to select the area where I want to mark, for example, asphalt. In this area, asphalt is roughly um, drawn. I go to the soil surface. And now I have chosen this area also. I can go into my asphalt row. and draw this area. I'll just press 2 and then mark it. We can do this with the rest of the spaces with this trick. Once all the soil profiles have been drawn We'll find something like this. I usually I use the loamy soil as the standard ground. However, you may use other types of soil, and 
but this is the default ones. At this point, we'll start to check if our buildings are connected correctly and if every, everything is recognized. We'll tap this recognize building zones by going to the facility manager and then I will press reorganize buildings edit buildings and you will see it's hard to see it but here all this building is one so this means this building is connected all the way around this is building 2 building 3 building 4 building 5 building 6 and building 7 if you find some kind of connection between let's say 4 and 4 here this means something is wrong you need to reorganize that and edit that now we've done the buildings and we've done the soil the soil profiles now we'll place some vegetation in the area I'll just zoom in slightly again now I want to place some some trees in this area here. We go to the vegetation tab and here we can see all kind of wood, uh, some kind of trees and plants. I will put in some pines here. This is just systematically pushed in. You may choose other plants. And please, all these plants is written in Latin and you can look it up in, in Google. Now we've placed all our plants of vegetation. And I'll just go through the other tabs briefly. There's the receptors. We use this enable feature, auto number number receptors. I don't want to go into this. Sources may be custom uh, modules like a water fountain. And then there is them, which is <coughs> um, if you have a hilly surface, a hilly ground similar um, areas like this you can use the dam manager to create hills and landscape like this finally there's single walls and you will get this m message about you have to be in 3d which will come to now walls is a two-dimensional object in this 3d uh, system and usually we don't want to use this so I don't want to go into that now alright we save our project save model and save it as something I have already saved it as simulation 02 Linux and let's just save it here we can now convert this to 3D and it will prompt that you might lose some data if you do this so be sure you have saved the model. After this, it will open. In, you can open your 3D model here in the 3D view. You will now see your model like this, and you may found, find uh, the model to be either wrongly modeled or you can change different factors for example this foliage seems kind of over overly done and I can change this I can now go into the vegetation tab change the tabs and so on also which I will try to explain now by going into the buildings tabs we are now able to go into individual segments and for example, choose break wall. 
and sort of paint our building with bricks. This is important if you want to uh, have a precise building model. It's least, less important if you want to simulate around buildings. However, there can be situations where you have um, glass facades and such where it actually makes more sense to have to, to paint the glass facades. After you've done this, your building is ready to be exported. We, we can now save our model. I will save it as a 3D model now. And now we can import this model in the project wizard and this will be the end of part 2.